Hi, I'm William, and today we have a special treat for you agriculture guys. Okay, we've been asked by one of our customers, okay, he's a farmer, and he needs to uh, start plowing his fields and things like that. He's asked us to look at one of uh, his equipment, pieces of equipment. So our media team came in here, they prepared some things for us, but I, they haven't told me what it is. So uh, it's going to be a surprise, not just to you guys, but also to me. So uh, let's see what we find. <laughs> Welcome to Service Call, a mechanic's guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode... Okay, so let's have a look at this thing. Let's do a quick uh, inspection on it. 17 years old, me and my brother, we had a shop. So, let's see if we can get it turning over. To easily and quickly book a mechanic, visit tecamohd.com. Okay, so let's have a look. Holy smokes, it's a Massey. It's an old Massey. Massey Ferguson tractor. Let's have a look at it. Nice, it actually looks in pretty nice shape. It's a 135 Massey Ferguson. Nice. Now, I, I haven't seen one of these in, well, in a few years. I've seen older ones, too. It's a 130, oh, and it, look at this. It's got a distributor cap. So it's a, it's a gasoline engine. It's not, it's not a, uh, a diesel. That's surprising. The truth is, I always thought they, were, uh, they would be diesels, but you know what? I guess there's exceptions, right? They've asked us to have a look at it, see if we can get it running. Uh, I really don't know how long it's been sitting here. Uh, I think these were, you know, from the 1965, from the mid 60s to about the mid 70s, I think, right? That's when they were made. I did work for a company in Africa that was a Massey Ferguson dealership. And I did get out to uh, work with the mechanics out on the, in the fields. I'm not an expert in tractors, but you know, an engine's an engine, gears are gears. So uh, let's see if we can get it running. Okay, so let's have a look at this thing. Let's do a quick uh, inspection on it. You know, I can see all the shifters are in here. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know what all these shifters do, but uh, it does have a PTO transmission gearbox. We have our final drive differential. Uh, it looks like we have our highs and lows as well. Okay. So we have our plow attachments in the back. Most of our uh, dash gauges and things like that, they seem to be there. So. Let's, uh, let's pop the hood open. Well, we found the fuel tank. Can't see very much inside, but it almost seems like it's empty. Here, I don't see my reflection. Our coolant level. Yeah, it's a little dry. We'll put water in it for now, just to top it up. But uh, we're gonna have to put some gasoline in it. We'll have to get a battery. Before we, we start it up is we're gonna pull the spark plugs off That'll give us a, a bit of a snapshot of what the condition of the engine is. So we'll look at the distributor cap as well. Okay. So let's, let's move over to the other side and let's have a look. Okay, so here's the trick. Uh, now when I, when I started, you know, I was 17 years old. Me and my brother, we had a shop and uh, he taught me a lot of little things and this was one of them okay uh, we started out uh, providing service for customers and uh, that's where i did my apprenticeship in automotive what we're going to do is pull the spark plugs and we're going to just slip them in here you see i slid it little holes in there and that way we don't lose track of them because if one of them is damaged i want to know which cylinder it is okay so i'm going to start from the front and work my way to the back we're going to put them in here and uh, that way we can track them if we need to and there's only four, it's not a big issue, but when you get to eight cylinders, you know, it, it could get confusing. You don't want to put all your spark plugs in one pile. The other thing you got to watch for here is the, um, the firing order, okay? In this case, it's, it's right there, it's one, three, four, two, okay? So 
one, three, four, two. Okay, so the, and we're gonna pop this open, I'll show you after. But you'll see that the rotor inside turns counterclockwise, and that's why it's in the backwards direction. So number one is here. The next one to fire is gonna be number three, which is this one, then four, and then of course, two, right here, okay? So the spark plugs, they actually, just by looking at them, they actually look pretty new. All right, I'll pull them out right away. Okay, so whatever you do, guys, don't cross these wires, all right? Because it's not gonna run properly. You have to know which ones go where. So you can mark them with tape or anything like that. Holy smokes, it's tight. Massey Ferguson quality. There we go. Okay, so let me just show you this. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. See, this one here is pretty dark, okay? So it's showing us some carbon. Um, when you see black like that, it's, uh, it's showing us raw fuel, so it's not burning properly, okay? So it could be that the carburetor needs some adjustment, could need an overhaul or something like that. So with this little box here, this is my number one. Just stick it in there, just like that. Now this one looks to be almost in the same condition. So that's two. There. This one here, yeah, about the same. Okay, so they're all about the same. I don't see any that's totally different. I would, uh, I would really worry, okay, if one of these was totally different when you compare it to the other ones. Okay, but you can see they're all about the same, uh, which means that it's, it's, uh, it's running a little rich, but they are all running parallel to each other. So, or sorry, I should say balanced, okay? Nothing stands out. Um, what we would like to find is maybe a golden brown color, okay? A nice uh, uh, beige, golden brown, you know, that's what you're looking for, for a nice clean burn. This one's black, so it's telling me it's rich. So it could be carburation, or it could be your plugged air filter, right? It could also mean that. So uh, let's just keep these like that. So then when we install them, we'll install them in the same way. We'll regap them. We have to, okay, you have to make sure that that gap right there, okay, is the, the, the right amount of distance from the center electrode. And we're gonna check that after, okay? So I'll just put these off to the side. Okay, so let's pull the distributor cap. When I worked in automotives, this was part of the tune-up process, okay? So you have to, these are some things that must be done on an annual basis to, to uh, gasoline engines, okay? Nowadays, everything's electronic. You know, they can go for, I don't know, what is it? Almost seven or 10,000 kilometers before you do anything to them, you know? But in the older days, you had to constantly keep them up, you know, look at them, uh, inspect them. And these were part of the, the tune-ups that we had to do on a regular basis, okay? Annual or when I worked in the prairies, I lived in Alberta, um, you know, you wanna do it before, before winter hit, right? Because then it would give you problems. Okay, so you can see somebody's actually replaced this stuff, all right? It looks pretty new in here, but that's your rotor right there, okay? There is a little bit of... You see that right there? That gives you problems right there because that messes with your timing, spark timing, okay? It should return on its own all the way back, okay? So it's, these are little things that we need to look at, okay? So we'll pull this off, I'll look. Okay, it looks like they have changed the, the points as well and condenser. The electric spark should come from this ignition coil, this round cylinder right here. Comes in here, goes into the center of the cap and this, through this rotor, it actually, as it's turning, it matches up with one of those electrodes and it goes out to your spark plug, okay? So you want to see the condition of those as well. And this one looks in, like it's in really good condition. So someone actually replaced this cap 
and it looks like new inside. Okay, same as the rotor. Sometimes these rotors are, are so worn that there's arcing across here. And sometimes the, uh, there's so much resistance here that the spark goes right through the center of the rotor and comes out the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Making sure that everything looks okay. Uh, they call it carbon tracking, as you can actually see where that spark is kind of moving through here. But it, it looks normal, okay? The only thing that concerns me a little bit here is that play right there. Okay, it doesn't return on its own all the way. Maybe we have a broken spring or something, which is under here. Okay. But for now, uh, I think just to get it running, we'll, we'll, uh, we won't go too far. One, once I start turning the engine over by hand, okay, we need to make sure it turns. We're also going to check this gap here for the points, okay? If that gap is not there, then it's not going to fire, okay? So we'll check that as well. All right, so uh, now that we got the spark plugs out, um, let's, uh, let's turn it over. Let's see if it, if it uh, turns over by hand. What we're looking for is any binding, okay? If we... So it's turning easily, okay, just like that. So I'm using the generator to, okay, and in these, uh, the old days, they didn't use alternators, they used generators, okay, and that's what this is. So there's magnets inside. And uh, I'm using that to turn it. I, tur I removed the um, spark plugs, so there's no resistance right now. But you can see our uh, our engine turns nice and easy, right? Yeah, that's what we need. That's what I was looking for. So that's a good sign. Which means that now we can hook up our battery and we can see if it actually cranks over, if a starter works. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Uh, battery is gonna be our, our next uh, project here, so. We're going to have to put a battery in place and that either we can go right up to this part or we can probably connect directly to our, to our starter. Okay. And we'll probably end up doing it this way, right through the starter. We're going to leave uh, spark plugs out because I don't want any compression right now. Okay. I just want to see if it turns over. That's all. Uh, no resistance on the engine. And we're going to see if our starter works. So let's do that. Okay, so we're just going to bypass. We, we don't have the key for it, but we're going to bypass our starter just to get it cranking. But one thing we're going to be looking at is, of course, our rotor. Okay, but you need to look right in here. So that's our points. So our points are probably going to open up. They should. You can see that they kind of, uh, let me see if I can get them to, there we go, like that. Okay, they're going to go like that. And, and if they open and close, then that's a good sign. Yeah, so what we're doing here is we're actually um, acting like our key switch, okay? And we're all, is, all we're doing is providing a signal to our solenoid, starter solenoid, which actually activates our starter. So that's what we're doing here is we're just bypassing the key switch or we're acting, this is my key switch, okay? That's all we're doing. So let's see if we can Get it turning over. Well, seems to turn over nice. So yeah, since we can turn it over, let's do a compression check. That's the next step anyway. So if we can do that and we, we have great compression, then we're pretty much ready to start. Tune in next time to see if William can get this old Massey Ferguson up and running again. This is what's good about having a brother as a mechanic, is you can borrow tools from him and you don't have to spend all the money. Okay, so this is the last cylinder, number four. Thing is, if they were to hold this, they'd actually get the shock of their lives. It's always good to get shocked every once in a while. To get affordable and high quality replacement parts, visit FordisHD.com. Thanks for all the support so far especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community. And if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments.